So dangle clacks already. Would you believe that? I cannot believe that. Freaking dangle clacks already. I was going to do jazz hands, spirit fingers. <clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome, you guys. Freaking welcome and hello. Today is freaking Thursday, which means that it is mother trucking vlog day. Mother trucking, you know, that means you know, motherfucking. It's mother trucking vlog day. For anybody watching on the replay, all those timestamps are going to be the first pinned comment right underneath this video. In fact, what I did last week as an experiment, and what I'm going to continue to do this week is pillage Mr. Jeremy V's timestamps. Jeremy V. Mr. Jeremy V's, Mr. Jeremy V's timestamps, and I use them and I make chapters on the vlog so you can kind of just scrub through with the little scrubber on the vlog and you can see everything, like all the different segments are cut up. It's amazing, it's amazing what we can do technologically these days on YouTube. But uh, yeah, full on action packed vlog for you guys tonight. Thank you so much, thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate you. Some of you have been here for a few hours just waiting and that, uh, you know, we chit chat a little bit. I try to pop in, uh, as best that I can. But thank you guys for coming out. Like I said, full vlog. We definitely have retro vaping. We got a big old box. We got box number two this week from the closet, you guys. We're going just straight top to bottom. We might even spend multiple vlogs on a single box once they start getting bigger and bigger, but I have them stacked, you know, smallest. Like It's like a pyramid of boxes in my closet. So we're going to the next bigger box. I think it's mods. I think I know what's in this box, but it should be really fun. I got a very random liquid tasting as well. Talking a little bit about what I've been vaping. I definitely have a beer. Got a little bit of mail, not a ton of mail, which is great, but I got a little bit of mail. And of course, we're going to pepper in a little bit of that, a little bit of that good old news and advocacy that I like to hear. Ah, uh, crap vaping is better than smoking technically yes but so what yeah who cares so what who so what andrew cuomo you know i i committed and i i'm wearing the dixon flannel just because i don't really get to wear normal clothes anymore i know that sounds like a stupid thing to say but i mostly wear sweats and t-shirts because i've just been working from home and i never leave the house anymore we don't go to any restaurants or concerts or shows or disney or anything so i want to wear a dixon flannel and i'm going to try to wear it for as long as i possibly can but with the temperature the way that it is in fact i'm going to need to turn down the air conditioning I should have done that. Damn it, I should have done that. When I roll the beer bumper, I'm going to try like hell to get to that air conditioning. <laughs> I'm going to try like hell to get that air conditioning and turn it down. But what I want to do right now is my new favorite thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. That's right. We're going to hear today from, uh, from Chris, a.k.a. Bullsnark. What say you, Bullsnark? Yo, yo, everybody. This is Chris. I just want to tell everybody to keep on vaping. Right now I'm headed across to Iowa. I've got to take a recliner to my cousin. Unfortunately, I couldn't get him on vaping fast enough. He's got stage four metastatic lung cancer that spread to his brain. And uh, last night he couldn't sleep because his lungs are filling up with fluid and he's probably not gonna last another two weeks. But do whatever you can. If you've got a loved one that's still smoking, do what you can. Try to get them off. Find them a pod kit. Whatever you can do. Because they're worth it. Keep on vaping. Uh, yeah, Boosh. Uh, absolutely, Bull Snark. There's a, there's a big old fist bump to you from me. Uh, heartbreaking, right? Completely heartbreaking. Uh, I appreciate the video. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, shout out to your cousin who has stage four lung cancer. I mean... Uh, that's horrible. And yes, Chris, you're absolutely right. That's what it's all about is getting smokers vapor products, just getting it to them somehow disposables, Cali burns, mods, whatever they want. Don't care. These need to be widely, widely available. And you know, I, I don't, with the exception, I, no, I don't think there was anybody in my family who died from lung cancer, who passed away from lung cancer. I, I've seen people go through it. It's not a pretty process. It is, it, it's nightmare. It, it's horrible. It's a horrific process. I don't wish that upon anybody. All I wish upon people is uh, far less harmful vapor products. So uh, thank you, Chris, for sharing 
uh, all, all my good vibes, all, you know, whatever thoughts and prayers as they, as they like to say on the mainstream media, um, horrible, Chris, horrible. I'm sorry that you have to go through that. And, uh, I'm sorry that the government doesn't uh, feel like your cousin's life is worth anything because they just want to ban vapor products that could substantially reduce the harm from uh, tobacco-related illnesses and deaths. Just uh, It's just enough to dr make me insane. But if anybody else out there has any videos, hopefully not exactly like Chris's, hopefully no nobody else has a video where they have to say, I'm going to my cousin's house because he's dying of stage four lung cancer. But if you have a video similar to Chris's, you just want to shout yourself out, shout your shop out, shout your family out, girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, life partner, whatever, your shop. You want to shout out your favorite liquid, your favorite mods, your favorite Dixon damn flannel shirts. You can send them on over to me, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, that one thing. Chances are I'll see the attachment and I'll end up using it. Oh, maybe in a vlog. Shit, Chris only sent that video like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. It's already in the vlog. You don't even know. Uh, if you guys are here already, go ahead and hit that like button for me. That would be tremendously Look, smash helpful. smash that like button. Just punch your computer for me. <laughs> I fucking love that guy. I love that guy so hard. So I guess what I want to do right now again, and tonight, you guys, I'm trying to not use my stream deck. I got it working, but I find it... I find it more difficult sometimes, unless it's Tuesday Bro Tuesday for some reason. The vlog and the stream deck just don't get along in any capacity. But what I wanna do right now is, and it's time to drink some beer, so what I'm gonna do is try as fast as I can to get to the air conditioner controls and back by the time this bumper is over with. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Mowgli, are, <laughs> are you ready? Okay, beer, go. Almost, Whew. almost made it, almost made it, mother trucker, almost made it. I don't actually even know anything about this beer, uh, so we're going to look it up. Uh, this came a few weeks ago from, I believe, GM Coils. I believe that it was uh, Giovanni from GM Coils who sent this over to me, if I remember correctly, which I have a terrible memory so that might not be the case, but what we're gonna be tasting tonight is this Saison 13. This is that Megadeth beer. It is supposed to be a farmhouse ale Saison. So I'm expecting it to be, eh, you know, a little bit sour, a little bit, you know, you know, it's got it's got that like cherry skin type of type of flavor in it. Anyway, I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna be pouring it tonight into a uh, you know, just a big old Grim Army pint glass. Sold out, I believe, unfortunately, on the uh, GrimArmyMerch.com. That's okay. We're just going to pour it. Yeah, it's a nice color. Nice, nice, nice sort of golden, beautiful sunshine color. Sunshine. Thick head that I'm going to have to drink through like a man. That's okay. That's a, that's a pretty beautiful looking beer. The aroma is that of, uh, yeah, beer. I don't know. Fruity. It's, a, it's usually farmhouse ales like this are a little bit more like a barley wine type of uh, type of flavors, but I don't know. We're, we're just going to dig into this. Cheers. Here's to you guys. Thanks for coming out. Oh, that's what's well, just spectacular. It's honestly kind of, it's a little bit boring. It's kind of a little bit boring. It's not as, you know, with saisons and like these farmhouse ales, I expect really upfront, bold, punchy flavors. And there's not a lot of like punchy, punchy flavor in this. It tastes like a light s -s summery sort of Pilsner type of beer. There's a little bit of complexity to it. Maybe like a little bit of like orangey citrusy type of flavors to it. It's kind of a bummer. I was expecting a little bit more. It real easy drinking though. That's what I'll say. Real, real, real easy drinking there. Yeah, they could go down uh, a little way too easy. Let's see, what's the ABV on this, you guys? 
Six point okay, six point one. That's not bad. Six point one is not too bad. Six point one won't get us too loopy. Uh, ben from the chat. What Megadeth song does it taste like? Hmm. Um, could be, uh, could be peace cells, could be Lucretia. I do get, a, I get a strong peace cells. I do get, a, <laughs> I do get a strong peace cells from this. Well, that's a good question. What, what? Yeah, exactly. Brewed in boring and man, I wish to wish I still had my boring and little little graphic -y guy. I don't think I do anymore. And that's a huge bummer. I had Boring Gand loaded in here for so long and then we never used it. Look, it's okay. It's a little bit Boring Gand. I was expecting a lot bigger flavor. Let's see what this is rated at over here on the uh, on the Beer Advocate. Okay. They're not wet, not great. <clears throat> you know, not, not, not amazing. This person rated it as a three and a half out of five. Yeah, kind of understated. Yeah, no real spice or fruit. A little bit of a yeasty note, I guess. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, it's interesting. M mild amber body. Citrus, bready, spicy, yeasty. Don't get any of... I get those, but it's like comparing smoking to vaping. I get them, but it's they're, the quantity is in such a small level that it's just barely even noticeable. Just barely even noticeable. I don't even know what I could pair this with right now. Homeboy's Mango. Let's pair it up. Homeboy Mango and some Megadeth Saison 13. Okay. Yeah. Sure. That's not bad. That's actually a pretty nice little pairing. Makes it gives gives this uh Megadeth beer a little bit of like a, a apricot. Apri what do you say? Apricot or apricot? Apricot type of uh, apricot type of flavor going on in there. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, we might be losing the flannel soon, friends. Unfortunately, we might be losing the flannel. So there you go. I don't know, it's fine. It's the uh, Megadeth Saison 13. It's it's okay, it's fine. I'll, I mean, I'll definitely drink the other ones. I'm not gonna, what am I gonna do? Get rid of them? Come on, are you kidding me? Throw these away? I'm going to drink them and it's mostly enjoyable, but it didn't explode on me with flavor like I really wanted it to. Is it too much to ask for a beer to explode on me with flavor? <sighs> Adults like flavors too and I fucking I like it exploded on me. So something you're going to have to deal with. Let's uh let's shift gears a little bit and let's talk just about a few things that I've been vaping. This is active vaping on the desk and there are times I, a while ago, I did a video that was 11 years of vaping, my review process, and I explained like the desk and no man's land. And there's a little little bit more nuance to it that I couldn't quite fit in that video because it was running a little bit long. But anyway, sometimes I will just relegate everything to no man's land. Just one day, I'll get a wild hair up my ass and go, okay, nothing's on the desk right now. You're all sitting out in timeout. You're all in no man's land. And then they slowly will make their way back to the desk. So this is stuff that kind of slowly has been working its way back to the desk. I did a full on like, <clears throat> everything goes to no man's land. You're, you're all unworthy to be, all unworthy to be on the desk right now. You're all going to no man's land. But what we have in the mouth to lung department, I got this old USV box mod, single 18650. Put a big old Grim Army sticker on there. That's the Pioneer mouth to lung RTA with some six milligram Turkish halo on the inside delightful. De it needs to be re-wicked uh, something fierce. Additionally, if we're hanging out in mouth to lung land, this is the new Aspire Nautilus Prime. Here's the thing about this. Might be doing a review for this soon. Maybe not next week, maybe the week after. The mouth to lung vape on it, because it's an Aspire Nautilus mini coil head, is awesome. Really good mouth to lung. Everything else about this, not my favorite thing. Really bizarre that I, this could have been something really cool. Aspire, you know, the Nautilus Prime. It's kind of not, uh, I don't know. Let me down a little bit. Some sort of 12 milligram mango milkshake in there. Also still hanging in there hard with the Lost Vape Gemini 
hybrid. It's still in mouth to lung and I still can't find a mouth to lung setting that I really enjoy. I keep going back and forth between the really l wide open mouth to lung and the really, really closed off spongy mouth to lung. And I realized I don't really like either of them very much. If I'm going to continue using this, I'm going to have to put it into uh, back into the restricted lung. This has also stayed on the desk. The Guar mod rarely leaves the desk, but I'm talking about that Centurion V2 that we did in a retro. Was that last week that we that we wicked the uh, the Centurion V2? I think it was last week. Got that uh, Burgio mung bean on the inside. Uh, here's the problem with this liquid: is a it tastes like mung beans. Two, the vapor smells like mung beans. And D, when I vape it back here, it's just, it smells, the whole back of the house ends up smelling like mung beans. But damn it, this is a good vape, 130 watts. This is the highest I've vaped in like a really long time. Uh, yeah, it's great. When you're craving this Borgio, like creamy milk mung bean flavor, there's nothing that can satisfy you like the creamy mung bean Borgio flavor can. In fact, I want to pair this just real quick. Why not? With the Saison. I know. Jenny, I know. Mung beans. You kind of go, what the crap is wrong with you? Like, why on earth would you vape a mung bean flavor? It, it's just good. I can't help it. I cannot help it. If you have the means or ability to order juice from Indonesia, this Borgio is worth a try. Just worth a try. Try to get maybe a smaller bottle, but I, I, I'm I glad that I got to taste it and I'm glad that I'm vaping it right now. Okay. Okay, that's fine. In fact, our very random liquid tasting, I think, is in the mail. Kent, Kent sent, that rhymed, and you know it rhymed. Kent sent me a liquid that we're gonna try. Um, Lastly, from the fucking Monday build stream, that Nightmare RDA, iced out Nightmare RDA, has still been sitting on this Para Series Hammer of God mech mod. And I just haven't vaped series in a really long time. The liquid I have on the inside is the uh, the Super Good, number two. Oh, pardon me. That was excessive. It's the one that tastes like a jammy dodger. Jammy dodgers. TT Vape is asking about Twisted Sunday. I want to try that liquid again so bad. I felt like I wasn't fair to that liquid and I'd like to try it again. It is still a thing. I believe it's still a thing. I want to try to get some more because I want to taste it again. I might still have a bottle or two sitting around if I didn't give them away. But this has been crazy, crazy intense. 0.37 uh, on series. I just, I, I haven't vaped series in a really long time. If Southern Comfort's here, he'll be stoked. He's just a series guy. I just haven't vaped series in a long time and it's really like, it's crazy powerful. Going from like these restricted lung RTAs and like a lot of mouth to lung stuff. It's like, oh, fuck you. Here, just have some series in your face. It's just hot. It's surprisingly flavorful, but it's just hot, hot vapor. In fact, this Hammer of God switch you have to really earn it. I like to press it with the, like the fulcrum of my thumb here and like really dig in. That's insane. That's an insane level of vapor, an insane level of warmth. But yeah, that's more or less what I've been vaping apart from the three billet boxes. Three billet boxes will just always be here. I got Silver Hawk. Yeah, that's the evil alien on the inside. Silverhawk with the evil alien. I got Harold here with the uh, Boxer V2 RDTA. RDTA on the inside. That constantly is getting vaped. And then I have uh, Golden Boy. I have uh, Disco Potatoes Golden Boy right here with uh, Haku Zeta on the inside and some three milligram peach among worlds. Shout out Sifu Mustache. But these... These are kind of always on the right-hand side. And that's one thing I didn't explain in that video is there's a right-hand side of my desk as well. The left-hand side is where mods live, but the mods that get, the devices and mods that get used the most, it's only ever one at a time, end up on the right-hand side. This Vupu Drag 
Max with the RTA on top. I have used this thing nonstop since I got it, nonstop. It has been firmly on the right-hand side of my desk so I can, you know, da -da -da, just working, just using my mouse and then poof, right there. Right there is my right-hand side vape. Set it back, you know, vape it, set it back down. Da -da -da, back to work in, using my mouse, poof, right there on the right-hand side. This has lived on the right-hand side of my desk since I got it. Since I got it. That's how much I like this. I think I'm gonna be doing a review for this next week. Maybe next Wednesday. Need a little bit more time with it. Maybe next Wednesday. Oh boy, mango on the inside. Legit. Hyper legit. Super legit. Legit AF. Well, that's so that's uh that's more or less what I've been vaping for the most part. There's a bunch of stuff that's relegated to no man's land right now. That Bogan 100 with the other pioneer, the K Fund's been over there for a while. The Unholy's over there. It's been over there for a while. Yeah. Uh the Argus GT's been over there for a while, you know. I just whatever. Sometimes you need to do a purge. Sometimes you need to do the cleansing. These are things that just happen. So, I guess what we're going to do right now, before we open any mail, before we do any very random liquid tastings, before we do any retro vapings, I've got hat fans standing by. I think I would like to get caught up a little bit on some news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. News and advocacy, yeah. In fact, hang on. I'm sorry. Delete that. No bumper right there. What am I doing? We have to do some super chats. What the crap? What? Super chat music is way too loud. Why doesn't anybody tell me that? Why doesn't anybody go, hey, Nick, your super chat music is like 8,000 decibels too loud? We'll do a couple of these super chats before we get to any news and advocacy. Trey, very gracious of you. Thank God it's finally vlog day. I swear I look forward to vlog day all week long. Vape on, Vape Nation. Fucking A, Trey. I appreciate you being here. Thank God it is vlog day. Give me, I'll vape to that. I want to have some more of this series. Crazy. But Trey, I really do appreciate that. Uh, Barbara, how you doing, Barbara? Shout out to my roommate, Billy Bean, doing lots for me. All right. Shouting out Billy Bean, the roommate. <laughs> how you doing, Barbara? Hope you're doing good. Hope you're thriving. Tanker Monkey, that's very gracious of you. Vlog day, beer, freedom. Ah, that's right. That's what we do here. Those are the three, the, the three tenants of Grim Green. Vlog day, beer, freedom. Should be nicotine, beer, and freedom. That's what I'm all about. Appreciate you being here, Tanker Monkey. Uh, the Vaping Australian. Got to go to work, brother. Catch you on the replay. Totally understandable. Yeah, appreciate you being here for the replay. Uh, Vaping Australian, It's you live in a, a different time zone than the rest of the universe. And it's like, Friday at 6 p.m. there, I think. Friday, 6 p.m., 7 p.m. there. What, do you work in the swing shift there? Crazy. Crazy, Vaping Australian. Vaping Cowboy, you you met, you met retracted your super chat. What the heck, Vaping Cowboy? All right. I'll give you a fist bump anyway, even though you retracted your super chat. That's a that's an effed up move. That's an effed up move. That's effed in the A, and I think you know that. <laughs> I think you know that, that it's effed in the A. Someone was to ask you if someone retracted a super chat, you'd say the same thing. You'd be like, "Yeah, that's effed in the A. It's a thing, and it got effed in the A." So, what are we gonna do? Okay, let me do this last one from Jake Scrapwood. What do you have to say, Jake Scrapwood? Why didn't that show up on my super chats? What the hell is happening right now? That's really bizarre. All right, Jake Scrapwood. Hoping the Empire mod at least goes on the shelf instead of in a box in the closet. Yeah, Jake, that you don't even have you you, you don't have to worry about the Star Wars mod. Yeah, the Empire mod will always be, always, always, always be out or displayed or something like that. I even have the uh, original little like box thing that you sent it to me in sitting over there out on display. So chances are it's uh chances are it's going to end up on display. Don't even trip. Don't even worry about that. Oh, come on. 
Oh, come on. Now I have to get to this again? So here, now we'll do the news and advocacy. I'll even run the bumper again. News and advocacy, yeah. <laughs> I had a... Uh, I had a computer uh, malfunction. Had a computer malfunction shortly before the vlog, around 3.45 p.m. That's California time. Uh, Chrome just completely shut down on me. Uh, I had all these windows open, all these bookmarks bookmarked, and everything open and everything running great. And then uh, Chrome just completely shut down on me. So I'm scrambling because I didn't have some of these bookmarks that I was going to talk about news and advocacy about. Okay, it's time. It's time. Goodbye, Flannel. You treated me well, Dixon, but it is just too GD warm in here, especially if I'm going to get into news and advocacy. You know, the rage sweat and the truth butter is just going to be all crazy all over the place. Huh. Put you in the back of my chair, mother trucker. Ah, yeah, there we go. So like I said, I got hat fans standing by. We're going to do a little bit of news and advocacy here. Uh, first things first. So what? Uh, shut up, Cuomo. You shut up, Cuomo. Uh, there still is. Uh, this is something I'm going to keep bringing up constantly. I'll, my shirt is sweaty underneath that flannel. I am sweaty. I do need to download more RAM, damn it. But what we all need to do is there is a still an active call to action to protect vape mail. This is trying to reject... Uh, Senate bill, I think it's Senate bill 1253, S 1253. This has not been voted on yet. And there is still an active call to action for it. If you've got a call to, if you've done the call to action, do it again. Not the real Gerard Butler's telling me to stop using Chrome. Listen, maybe if you haven't done the call to action, do the call to action. And like Danielle said a few weeks ago on Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, like mix it up, you know, like call one day, maybe do the call to action the next day, maybe email the third day, maybe call again on the fourth day. Um, a lot of people have been asking about, okay, so that's where it is. That's the tab that's missing. Hang on. Hold, please. Hold, please. Boosh. There it is. There's the one that's missing. And a lot of people have had uh, questions about this, about the uh, vape mail ban, if it's been voted on, where it is. This is stuff that you can track uh, if you Google the bill. So if you Google S1253 and you go to the GovTrack website, which don't even trip, I'll have a link down in the description to where you can where you can just make one click and see this whole thing. GovTrack has where this bill is. You can read the entire bill. You can see the sponsors. You can see the context of it. You can see when it was introduced. You can vote. You can put your opinion on it. You can track this. You can get emails sent to you anytime any action sort of happens with this bill. And one thing that GovTrack does that I really, really like, and I think is really super helpful is they give you a progno prognosis. They give you a prognosis. <laughs> I've been, I've been powering through all of Seinfeld. I love Seinfeld and I've been watching all of Seinfeld. Prognosis negative. I can't not think of that when I hear the word prognosis, but they give you like a prognosis of this bill. And according to GovTrack, well, according to Scoops Labs, the prognosis of this bill is has a 42% chance of passing. 42%, that's it. That doesn't seem like a lot to me. Yeah, this is the vape mail ban that was introduced by that Texas senator, John something. It's John something whose name I can't remember. It's got crazy bipartisan support. Dianne Feinstein jumped right on board with it. But according to Scoops Labs, this only has a 42% chance of passing. I think that's I think that's really good. To me, I look at that and I go, oh, okay. It's got a 42% chance of passing. I bet you with some more calls, some more calls to action, some more emails, we might actually be able to stop this. 42% doesn't seem very high to me. So I'm gonna post a link in the description to the CASA call to action for vape mail. One more thing I'm gonna throw out there, as I always do, the Veritas cohort study. You guys are probably sick of hearing about it. I'm honestly sick to death of talking about it. 
I don't, in fact, fuck that. We're not going to do the Veritas cohort study this week. Of course, I'm joking. Veritas cohort study. I'll post a link down in the description. You could be a part of an immensely important and large scale vaping study. This is for people who have only smoked less than a thousand cigarettes in their entire life. So about 50 packs. If you've ever, if you've smoked about 50 packs and now you vape, you could be a part of this study. It's not intrusive. It's like a medical visit once a year. And then every three months you fill out a little questionnaire and then they might give you a prize at the end. You could be a part of this. I'll post a link down in the description. I would really love to see this Veritas cohort study, get enough people to do it because I really want to see the results. I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be very cool. As I've said before, I guess, uh, sure. In a little bit of self-serving news, um, I want everyone to, get, I want to get everyone to, if you're, I do a news and advocacy show that's just news and advocacy. That's all it is. It's just news, just advocacy. That's it. We don't vape. We don't beer. We don't liquids. We don't nothing. We just news, you know? Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, I had Colin Mendelson from the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association, the president of the Tobacco Harm Reduction Association of Australia on the show. We talked for about an hour and a half. We went over all sorts of really great things about what's going on in Australia, drawing these parallels between what's going on in the United States and what's going on in Australia, especially with the demonization of vaping, the demonization, you know, the unjust demonization of nicotine. I think it is... A great show, turned out great. If you wanna go check it out, I'll post a link down in the description. I, I think it went really well. So if you haven't got to watch that replay, make it like the one replay that you watch, especially if you are an Australian vapor, because we also talk about what Australian vapors can do to kind of fight fucking Greg Hunt, that dick, <laughs> to sort of, you know, fight Greg Hunt and, uh, Anyway, I thought it was really good. In a little bit more self-serving news, I uh, ages ago, I don't even remember this happening, but ages ago, months ago, I did an interview for a vape magazine out of, I'm going to get this wrong, aren't I? Columbia? I think it's a vape magazine out of Columbia called thevapingtoday.com. In fact, here, I have a screenshot of the interview that I did. Both our eyes are closed. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. But I did an interview with this uh, Colombian vaping magazine. We talked about, uh, we talked all about, you know, vaping, tobacco, tobacco control, tobacco harm reduction. We talked about World Vape Day. So this was probably from back in May or June. I think he caught up with me after World Vape Day. It's a little bit of self-serving news, but uh, if you want to go check it out, I'll have a link as well in the description. Plus both our eyes are closed. That's, that's cool. But thank you, Breeze Tones. Look, it's like I told Colin Mendelson on Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, we have to stick up for each other. You know, when shit's going down in Australia, I expect American vapors to go, Hey, <laughs> you know, look, we got to help out Australia just in the same way that when shit's going down in the United States, there's Australian vapors and people like Bogan making videos about what's happening in the United States. Contact your representatives, do the calls, CASA calls to actions, you know? Vaping is, it's such a global thing now that we, we all have to look out for each other. There's shit going down in India right now, flavor bands, the Netherlands right now, flavor bands. We just need to stick together, you know? We just need to stick together and be part of the same, uh, you know, team. Team, uh, team fucking quit smoking with nicotine. We'll think of a snappier name later. That's not the point. That's not the point. But we all need to be, we all need to be on the same team. Um, one more thing that I wanted to touch on. I don't have a screenshot for this. I guess I could have grabbed the Vice logo or something like that. But uh, real Jim Shady was it? Real Jim Shady in the Discord? Was it real Jim Shady in the Discord? Uh, no, Cerberus. I apologize. Cerberus from the Yo Yo Discord posted this great video this spectacular video uh, from Vice, uh, and it just came out today, October 1st, 2020, a year after Ivali, they Vice did this video called Inside the Deadly World of Counterfeit Vape Cartridges. And when they're talking about vape, they're talking about cannabis, T 
THC cartridges. They go undercover. This guy goes undercover into bodegas in New York City asking about, you know, you guys have any THC cartridges? And he's like, oh, yeah, dude, I just got this new supplier. It's great. Yeah, real high quality stuff. New supplier, you know. And then they go and test it. And it turns out that all of these are counterfeits. This is what Evoli came from, was black market, contaminated, illicit THC cartridges. And we have been shouting this news like from the, like from the fucking rooftops for a year now. Well, Vice did this really great video. Like I said, they go undercover. Uh, I, I thought it was really good. They don't exactly like cheerlead for vaping or anything. You know, they don't really even talk about nicotine vaping. They don't really defend nicotine vaping. They're just trying to get to the bottom of this, of these counterfeit vape cartridges that are appearing in the streets of, you know, states that don't have uh, legal recreational uh, cannabis. Anyway, it's a great video. I really feel like it's worth a watch. In fact, I'll just put a link in the chat right now. I mean, don't go right now. Don't go watch the video right now, <laughs> you know, because you're already busy. You're already occupied. Turn your phones on silent. You, you got shit going on. It's vlog day, suck a fish. So yeah, Vice did a really great article and uh, I'm going to throw that out there. I'll have a link down in the description. What else? What else do we have here for news and advocacy? Let's talk about uh, one of my heroes, Sally Sattel. She, I, she... Sent, I, she DM'd me on Twitter and like my mind exploded. I couldn't even type back. I was just like, I'm such a big fan. Like Sally Sattel is uh, an incredible person. Sally Sattel MD, by the way, Sally Sattel MD. Well, one year ago tomorrow, one year ago tomorrow, she went on uh, CNBC on one of their programs, they had a vaping alert. You know, they're talking about e volley and the lung injuries because it's October and it's still fresh in everybody's minds. And if you remember October 2019, is it hydration time wired talk? Son of a bitch. All right, let's get back to Sally Sattel. <laughs> let's get back to Sally Sattel in a second, but let's hydrate. Oh my God. Let's hydrate, let's hydrate with Kent this time. I re-edited his video to make it, you know, better. Oh, I love water. I'm glad that I love water so much. It makes it easy to stay hydrated. Hydro homies. Yeah. Stay hydrated. Hydro homies. And I do have to mention this. Uh, I do have a sponsor of this blog, a legitimate sponsor of this blog. They pay me money to do this. The coldest water. I'll have a link down in the description. You can use the code GRIM to get 10% off. But literally, if you want to buy the greatest water bottle I have ever owned in my life, then you can do so. Uh, I think it's fantastic. This thing never leaves my side and it is the perfect palette for stickers. I got nicotine is not a crime. I got truth butter on there. We got banana stickers. Coil turd is on there. A little coil tur hot co hot coil turd action. <coughs> but uh, yeah, th I appreciate that heads up. In fact, I think it, I think I'm just gonna turn on hat fan. In fact, what I noticed about hat fan, since I'm melting in here, is you hold to turn it on. There's three fan settings. This is the highest fan setting. Is that too loud? Does it sound like I have a PlayStation turned on in the background? Let me just hat fan for just a hot second before we get angry. Not really get angry. We're actually, this is really good news, talking about this interview that Sally Sattel did. Oh, yeah, hat fan. This is honestly really refreshing. And I know I said that last time we had hat fan, but hat fan is really refreshing. All right, we can't keep doing hat fan. Okay, feel better. Feel better, feel better already just from just a little bit of hot hat fan action. So, Sally Sattel was on CNBC at the height of Ivali insanity, you know, the height of Ivali craziness. She's an addiction expert. This is Sally Sattel, MD. She is an addiction 
expert, and she called e-cigarettes at that time a holy grail for public health. This is a spectacular video. Sally Sattel is just so smart and so well-spoken, so well-educated. She's a, she's a subject matter expert on nicotine. And you can see these hosts, and I don't know who these hosts are. There's one guy, he's just an idiot. I don't know who he is. There's another blonde lady who's equally, uh, equally as silly. And you can watch this interview and you can see the way that it, like he asks her about vaping. So she starts talking about vaping and e-cigarettes and how great these are. And right as she's like getting on a roll and talking about all of the science behind vaping, the blonde lady just interrupts and goes, well, 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 hang on, you know, hang on. Jewel did market to kids. She's, she, claim, she makes the claim that Jewel used to have assemblies at schools, which we know is demonstrably false. We know it happened one time. And in that one instance, Jewel was invited by the school to be there. So she's going on and on. She cuts Sally Satell off like mid-sentence to mention, oh, Jewel did. Jewel, you're wrong. Jewel did market to kids. Well, that's one thing that I know for sure. Completely tries to derail her. And Sally Sattel goes, okay, well, look, I'm not here to defend Jewel. If that happened, then that's absolutely, you know, that's absolutely terrible. Of course, kids shouldn't be vaping. And then, <laughs> and then, here, here's a screenshot. I don't know why I have a screenshot. Just, that's the video, Sally Sattel. And then, here, hang on, let me show you this picture. Because this is fucking hilarious. When Sally Sattel is talking about teen vaping and oh absolutely you know no teens should be vaping of course not of course teens shouldn't be vaping right and then she goes on to say unless you know unless those teens were smokers and the look on this lady's face when she said that teens shouldn't be vaping unless those teens were already smokers the look on this co-host face was like the mo like just flabbergasted flabbergasted it's hilarious and it's an incredible video. And then it happens again. Like Sally starts talking and getting on this tangent about how great these are and how this is the holy grail for public health and how it doesn't lead kids into smoking because we have the lowest youth smoking rates in the history of you know recorded time and this, that, and the other. And all the hosts do is try to derail her and get the focus away from what she's saying and back into like, well, you know, Jewel, Jewel definitely markets to kids, definitely markets to kids. It's an incredible thing. It's an unbelievable thing. Yeah, you want to talk about fake news, green-eyed lady? This is some of this, the, 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 these hosts should be ashamed of themselves, ashamed of themselves. They did no deep dive. They have surface level, you know, uh, familiarity with the subject of vaping, with the subject of nicotine. The, that one blonde co-host, this girl, shocked girl, she just straight up lies and she just says, oh, they did, they did go to schools. They, She says they ended that program as if this was like an official thing at Jewel where at board meetings, they're like, so how, well, how many schools are we visiting this week? That was never a thing. That was, <laughs> there was never a thing. I'm going to put a link to this uh, amazing video. Oops, let me get the whole address here. That'd probably be helpful. Amazing video down in the description as well as in the chat. Boosh right there. You're getting it 20 seconds early before I even mention it because of that lag. Uh, but that link and a multitude of other links. And this again is a little bit self-serving, but I'm not just trying to drive traffic to my website. One thing that I set up on grimgreen.com is if you go to advocacy links on grimgreen.com, I have just loads of links, like insane amounts of links. So when you're you know, if you're on Facebook or you're on social media, you're on Twitter or something like this, and you see someone on Facebook, you see your aunt saying, well, yeah, you know, I heard that those are worse for you than cigarette. I heard that nicotine causes, you know, I heard that nicotine causes cancer. You can go, oh, well, you can be that guy. You can be Oscar. <laughs> you can go, uh, actually, here's what the science says. Uh, actually, they're actually 95% less safe. Actually, Actually, there's a three and a half year study done in the New England Journal of Medicine that shows that they're almost twice as effective as any NRT currently on the market. Uh, actually, NRTs and vapor products use the exact same nicotine 
And if there's no threat of abuse for chant or for uh, for gum or patches, then why on earth would there be an uh, you know an uh, uh, a habit uh, you know an abuse of vapor pro? It's crazy. So that's when you get into arguments, you can go to grimgreencom slash advocate. You can find whatever links you need. There's some graphics and things and the such as in there as well as, you know, like youth smoking rates, what all of these people have said about vaping. Like you want to know what uh, the truth initiative says about vaping. There's a graphic for it on groomgreen.com. You can, you can use that against people. There's master settlement agreement stuff in there. It's all good stuff. And again, not trying to just get you to my website because uh, I don't I don't care about that. This is just important information that I want to try to get out there so that all of us are, you know, fully armed with all of the information that we can possibly have when we're discussing this kind of stuff on uh, on the interwebs and on YouTube. <sighs> Let me take a breath. Dang. Let me have some beer. Dang. Just cranking through some news and advocacy. How are you doing, Cameron? I appreciate you being here, Cameron. Uh, so the last thing I guess I wanted to mention here, uh, this headline says, World Health Organization warning on vaping draws harsh response from UK researchers. So someone, someone finally has the, the intestinal fortitude, the guts to stand up to the World Health Organization and their vaping recommendations. You know, the World Health Organization has been staunchly, staunchly against vaping. The World Health Organization is the same group of people that said that e-liquid was highly flammable. Highly flammable. That's demonstrably false. Demonstrably false. Didn't stop the World Health Organization. The World Health Organization says that there's no evidence, you know, no evidence that vaping can help you uh, get off of traditional combustible tobacco cigarettes. So new warnings about vaping issued this week by the World Health Organization have prompted strong pushback from public health experts in the United Kingdom who charged that World Health Organization has been spreading blatant misinformation about the potential risks and benefits from e-cigarettes. Yeah, Thank God for the United Kingdom <laughs> and the Royal College of Physicians and Peter Hayek and John Britton. It's kind of unbelievable. So this is something that we've gone over, in, I think, in the past. When did we go over the whole, the World Health Organization? Was that on a Tuesday, bro, Tuesday? We went like line by line on what the World Health Organization thinks about vaping. I think that was on a Tuesday, bro, Tuesday. I'll try to find the link. I'll try to put it in the description. But this article goes on to say, uh, the UK response was harsh. The World Health Organization has a history of anti-vaping activism that is damaging their reputation. This document is particularly maligned. Peter Hayek, who directs the Tobacco Dependence Research Unit at Queen Mary University of London, wrote in a statement released today by the UK Science Media Center. There is no evidence that vaping is highly addictive, he said. Less than 1% of non-smokers become regular vapors. Vaping does not lead young people to smoking. Smoking among people, uh, behung, be, smoking among young people is at an all-time low. There is clear evidence that e-cigarettes help smokers quit. Peter Hayek. <laughs> Peter Hayek's upset. And then you have, you know, it goes on to talk about John Britton, the director. Listen to these. Listen to these, you know, references. What is this called? Not references, qualifications. Listen, thank you, Scott. Scott's like, I'm from the UK. You're welcome. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Appreciate you. John Britton, listen to these qualifications. John Britton is the director of the UK Center for Tobacco and Alcohol Studies and a consultant in respiratory medicine at the University of Nottingham. With those qualifications alone, we should be listening to John Britton a lot more than we are. He says World Health Organization misrepresents the available scientific data. Uh, Public Health England maintains that vaping is at least 
95% less harmful than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. This is the same Royal College of Physicians that back in the 50s warned the world that there was a link between smoking and lung cancer. And the United States, we just didn't listen then either. We just went, no, no, we have all of these studies. We have all of these studies from our superior American doctors, then they don't come to that same conclusion. And now it's taken as just, how could you ever think any other way? It's taken as just Bible truth fact. Of course, smoking leads to lung cancer. Of course it does. We're going to win this. We're going to win this eventually. And of course, Science Mag Ah, they 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 kind of are not really super on board with harm reduction. They're, this is the same publication that put out the thing last week we talked about where, oh, you can't call it vapor anymore. Va that just makes it sound, you know, less harmful than it really is. The correct term for it would be aerosol. You know, we want to try to focus on the scariest sounding words, aerosol. We should We should call it an aerosol. So Science Mag kind of puts you know, they put their own spin on it towards the end of it. That You know, the end of it, they're talking about, well, you know, in the United States earlier this month, a team of six experts disputed the 95% less harmful claim. Disputed it. Six U.S. experts are going to take on the 64,000 doctors represented by the Royal College of Fucking Physicians Six experts, yeah, six experts, okay, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> six experts, one of whom is a paid consultant for litigation against e-cigarette industries. So he has a vested interest in bringing e -cigarette, the e-cigarette industry down. That's insane. They go on to talk about, well, well, you know, there's growing evidence that e-cigarette use is associated with future cigarette use. Is there, is there growing evidence? Is the growing evidence that we have the lowest youth and adult smoking rates literally of all time in the history of all time since the fucking first clock, the first whatever Mayan calendar today, October 1st, 2020, we have the lowest youth and adult smoking rates of all time. If vaping led to smoking, I feel like we would be seeing the smoking rates go up instead of continue, continue, continue to plummet. This sciencemag.org even mentions the uh, New England Journal of Medicine study that shows that vapor products are almost twice as effective than traditional NRTs to get you off of deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. And then they even make a part, a point of saying, even this, you know, there's, there's some experts that have pushed back against this claim as well, because 40% of those participants, uh, you know, that the, the used e-cigs to quit smoking, they were still using them after one year. That's not a, that's not a critique. They quit combustion. That's all that matters. What you do after that has no bearing on it. It's like saying, well, this guy quit using, uh, his motorcycle and now he just runs every year. But, uh, Running, I wouldn't, you know, he continued running after a year. Well, whoopty fucking shit. He quit combustion. Quit combustion. The enemy is combustion. The enemy is not nicotine. The enemy is not continuing to use nicotine. You crazy person. Jennifer, who wrote this, <laughs> that's inconsequential inconsequential. It's called, it's called harm reduction. Now, if you want to become a pure prohibitionist and you want to try to limit people's access to nicotine, which is, I mean, one of the most benign things you can possibly be addicted to, then that's a different conversation. Then that there, we're going to have a different conversation around that. These are harm reduction tools. These are supposed to get people off of tobacco cigarettes, which they demonstrably do. Demonstrably do. So I guess that's the last thing I really wanted to mention here. I don't have any neat graphics uh, or anything other than, you know, I don't know. There's this picture of a guy vaping. You want to see that? No, you don't need to see that. 
I'll have a link down in the description where you can check out this science mag if you want to. I thought it was a pretty interesting article, all things considered. And it's crazy to me that this, you know, six experts in the United States are going against the Royal College of Physicians. And you have John Britton, who's the director of the UK Center for Tobacco and Alcohol Studies and a consultant in respiratory medicine at the University of Nottingham. You have people going, well, he, he could be wrong. <laughs> he could he could be wrong you could be wrong it's like colin mendelson said last week the longer that we argue about this just more people are gonna die and that's not okay that is not okay so I'll have some links down in the description from all of this news and advocacy that I talked about this week, including the, the Veritas cohort study, the vape mail, my Tuesday bro Tuesday, uh, the Sally Sattel, the, the vice video, uh, grimgreen.com and this world health organization drawing harsh responses from UK researchers. And at the end, they still kind of stand by the world health organization. She says, the dispute is unlikely to be resolved soon. Well, yeah, because nobody's listening. But for the World Health Organization, the downside of e-cigarettes, give me one, give me one downside of e-cigarettes. One, one, give me one downside of e-cigarettes. You can't. The downsides of e-cigarettes clearly outweigh their benefits. E-cigarettes are banned in over 30 countries worldwide with more and more countries considering bans to protect young people. I need some hat fan after that rage sweat. I need some hat fan after that rage sweat. Yeah, give it to me. Oh, hat fan. So like I said, I'll have links all down there in that descriptional area if you wanna check out uh, what we talked about here on Tuesday Bro Tuesday. But uh, Tuesday Bro Tuesday, what? Here in the news and advocacy of the vlog, I am losing my mind. Uh, what I want to do right now is, uh, before we get to any mail or anything like that, anything really, really fun, let's do a couple more of these super chats. What say you? That's it. That's all you get. I never do the super chat bumper more than once. It's just not a thing. It's just, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Uh, TT Vape. The type two is fake news. Is it? I have no way to disprove you right now, TT Vape. The Type 2 will be a thing. It's it's coming out, I promise. They're being shipped right now. We're literally, it's just a matter of time, you know? Oh, it's just a matter of time before the Type 2 arrives. Vape and Cowboy. Uh, my bad, not sure what happened, but anyways, hello from Texas. First time live. I'm usually working, and I just want to say thank you and keep on va Vape and Cowboy. Fuck yeah, bro. First time. Welcome. Welcome, Vaping Cowboy. Southern Comfort. I knew that you would get one. Out uh, out on the Harley with a hottie. What? Southern Comfort. You'll catch the replay. Appreciate that. So enjoy. You know? You know what I mean? Enjoy. I'm really jealous of your Harley. I'm really jealous. I don't get to drive a motorcycle, and I really want to. Also, I have a Rise Bar with me tonight. You know, because sometimes you need to stealth vape. Jake Scrapwood says, I don't know why I wear my old glasses on every vlog. Jake Scrapwood says, I figured out why all these places are following us. They were UK colonies. Years after moving, they are still rebelling against their parents. You know what? That could very well be. I doubt it. I mean, I'm going to say I doubt it. But hell, it could be. <laughs> it could be, Jake Scrapwood. Uh, Kevin Yum very gracious of you. Hey, just because you kick buns for vapors uh, sake and you make folding laundry a little more bearable. Kevin's folding laundry right now. I'm wearing hat fan and Kevin's folding laundry. I'll share a secret with you, Kevin. Just you though. Everybody else, nobody else listen. I have a whole mess of laundry right now in the living room that I need to fold as well. So here's the deal, Kevin. You do a live stream so that I can watch you while I fold my laundry. How about that? A little bit of a trade-off, right? A little bit of a trade, <laughs> a little bit of a trade-off. Dick Roller, 
How have you been, my man? I'm just happy to be here with my sour beer and my mango vape. Hey, holy shit, I have a sour beer, mango vape. We're like twinsies. Uh, we're like twinsies, dick roller. Twinsies. Damn, that's good. And lastly, Kent's here. What? Kent Hill. Yeah. Kent. <laughs> I shouldn't be that excited. Twisted Messes is here, and he sent me uh, what looks to be some sort of purple type of animal on a chair that's drifting. That's the first thing that I thought. I thought it was a jetpack at first, but it appears that he's on an office chair that's kind of drifting around corners. I don't even know what that means. I wish you could flip it in Advocate for Liberty, like if it pulled air and shot it out the front. How cool would that be? So you could take a big vape and then exhale and it would just go zoop, like straight up into the bill and then out the front. Reverse hat fan. We need reverse hat fan. Kent, have you heard about hat fan? Yeah. It's cooling me off right now as we speak. This is going to be part of the vlog. Like post news and advocacy. This is what I imagine it feels like when girls do like a jade roller on their face. <laughs> you know, jade roller on the face. This is the this is my jade roller. This is hat fan. Mother truck and hat fan. Michelle Lynn, John Haymaker in chat asked if your hat sucks in your vapor. Now I want to know too. Science time. Okay. I think it does suck in the vapor from the front. Here, hang on. Let me take off hat fan. See, hat fans running right now. Let's do a little bit of uh, let's do a little bit of science here. Yes, hat fan will suck in vapor from the front. So if I was wearing hat fan, I could someone could blow vapor at me and it would just blow it straight into my face. Here, I'll do it like from this angle. Does that help here? Let me move my microphone. Hat fan. Yes, that's amazing. It blows it right down at your face. That's kind of amazing. Hat fan, na 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 na, hat fan, na na na. <laughs> My pleasure, Michelle, then. We'll turn that PlayStation off. So yeah, now there's some super chats. Now there's some news and advocacy. Let's open, uh, why don't we, uh, why don't we uh, open a little bit of mail? I got some mail here from Kent. Kent's here and I got mail from Kent. Yeah, well, like I said, I got a few packages here. I know I know what two of these packages are. I know what that is and I know what that is. So let's start off with Kent's. Since Kent's here right now, I'm going to open this package that I got from Kent. But I have been begging Kent to try this Indonesian e-liquid that he says is like, you know, just you know, the best, the greatest liquid of all time, right? Just better than anything you've ever tried before. Oh, good. He sent me another. I'm glad I have another one. You know, I, I put up the other holographic uh, Kent image for a long time. Kent, why aren't these stickers? I thought this was a sticker and I was peeling the front of it off and I'm thinking, okay, well, that's not a sticker. It's just a photograph. It's just a holographic photograph of Kent. But I appreciate that. And you sent me some dude wicks? Just dude wicks. Why did you just send me dude wick? Is there anything else in here? Is this really just dude wick? You're like, I just want to send you some dude wick. I haven't seen the squidood branding in forever. And it's weird because we're going to see some more squidood branded something in the vlog tonight. But there you go. That's some dude wick. They are stickers. They are not stickers. 
There's a, those, these aren't stickers. I cannot peel the back off of them. Holy shit, they're stickers. I don't have room on my water bottle, Kent. I don't have room on my water bottle right now. But holy shit, they're stickers. I have, I'll find a place to put this. I'll find a place to put this, Kent. The other one's over here on my Transformers poster. <laughs> this is what Kent sent over. Yeah, buddy. We're going to be drying this tonight. We're going to be trying some freaking oat drips tonight. Oat drips. I'm so excited. Should I even smell it? It's six milligram. Oh, we're going to be vaping it out of a uh, recoil RDA. We're going to be vaping it out of a recoil RDA. Oat drips. I'm excited about this. And Kent says that this is like the banger liquid. It's just like, it's such a good juice. He doesn't shut up about it. He just goes on and on about oat drips. And so I said, can you, he's like, I ordered like 12 bottles from Malaysia or something like this. It wasn't 12 bottles. All right. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to try that oat vitz. Put it on the bottom so when you drink, we see it. Holy shit, that's fucking hilarious. I already have a, I can cover that. I could do that. Except I don't hold it up when I drink anymore. That's actually a pretty good idea. That's actually a pretty good idea. Now this came from uh, someone named Dan. I think there's some literature in here. Oh, these are liquids. I, these are full liquid mail tonight. Full liquid mail. Dan, juice my way. Is Dan, are you here tonight? Juice my way here tonight? He says, what's up? Hope this reaches you in the highest of spirits. Last we spoke was at the rally in DC about Juice My Way, me actually working on Donut Pounder Remix at the moment. I'm close to completing it. Dude, there's going to be a Donut Pounder clone. Are you so excited? Uh, a few more finishing touches. Uh, it's mind-blowing to me over years of watching your videos and thinking like, man, this dude really cares about the industry and the positive effects it has on people's lives. Figured with the work I do in my Facebook groups and my neighborhood hitting rallies and conventions, our paths would have crossed sooner. <laughs> yeah, but this is a regard pleasure to meet you too as well. It's good to meet someone who genuinely cares about what happens to this industry. I do. I am. I really do. I really care about really m more than what I care about happens to the industry. I care about what happens to smokers and it makes me insane. I mean, you know, I'm a broken record right now. I don't need to tell any of you guys this. I just need to shut up, but I care about what happens to smokers. I don't want to see anybody else dying of lung cancer. I don't want to get an email from someone saying my, my grandfather, my father, my uncle, my cousin, uh, you know, my aunt is dying of lung cancer. I don't want any more of that. That's unnecessary right now. Unnecessary, unnecessary at this point in time. We could end smoking right now. Whew. Okay, so he sent over a lemon cream wafer. Okay, that sounds amazing. Peach cobbler, that sounds amazing. A root beer, interesting. Peaches and cream, banana moon pie, <gasps> frosted flakes, strawberry jam, and banana foster. I mixed up the milligrams for just variety. I've been vaping for a few years, and I have dedicated so much time and effort to this. Brother, I hope you truly enjoy them. Juice my way. Dan, freaking thank you. There's one I want to taste real quickly. Not taste taste, but like serenity now. I want to like just do, you know, a knuckle test of it. Lemon cream. Where's the lemon cream? Juice my way lemon cream. Oh, you even got some uh, fancy, fancy schmancy ass fucking labels on there. Let's see. Lemon cream. I am interested to vape that. I also want to taste the banana moon pie. Just knuckle test, right? Strawberry, root beer. Thank you for labeling these, by the way. Banana foster. Nope, it's going to be the last one I pull out. 
Yep, Frosted Flakes. And so that, by process of elimination, this is the Banana Moon Pie. Banana Moon Pie. Yes. Give that to me. All right. Well, sweet, man. Thank you for the liquids. Thank you for the liquids. And I know, Addy Tooney, I know I've seen you here already tonight. I've seen you here, Addy Tooney. This is an Addy Tooney package. Addy Tooney, if you guys don't know Addy Tooney, he was just on the uh, Rise and Vape podcast with Logan Exhales, bro. Check it out. I'll try to find a link and put it in the description. But uh, he was just on there. I haven't got a chance to listen to it yet, but he's a longtime veteran of the industry. He's been around forever just helping people like crazy. Nick, I hope you like the Portuguese gig. Let me know if you want it public or not. I made the bourbons for pickle. Hopefully she is a good sharer. Love you, brother. Toonie. Freaking Toonie. Oh, these are the recipes. Portuguese yig. He's dialing it in. Cherry bitters and aged bourbon cream. Pre peach apricot with bourbon cream. And cranberry aged bourbon cream. Portuguese yig. Portuguese Yig. Are these labeled Addy Tooney? Yeah, kinda. Bourbon. Okay, Portuguese Yig. I'm just gonna do a knuckle test of this. Let's do a full. Shit, I wish I had something else to try this in. I wish I had something else to try this in, Addy Tooney. I have nothing else right now that I can even try a liquid in. And that is annoying. And thank you for taping these. And I don't mean that sarcastically. I mean, actually, thank you for taping these. What? What? That is, that is pretty yiggish. That is, that is pretty dang yiggish, Addy Tooney. All right. Well, shit. Let's try this next week. Let's try, let's try Addy Tooney's Yig Clone. Uh, and if it's, if it's legitimate, then I'll put the recipe out there. There it is. You want to see it? Oh. There it is. Whoa, recipe. We'll put the recipe out there and everybody can just go crazy and, uh, you know, vape yig at your heart's content. Just vape it. Just who gives a hell? Just vape it. Really, I'm the most excited about the dude wick, Kent. I'm mostly excited about the dude wick. Well, now that Kent's here, does Kent want to see his new uh, Hydro Homies bumper? Because I definitely need to hydrate right now. glad that I love water so much. It makes it easy to stay hydrated. Hydro homies. Oh my God, that is funny. <laughs> oh my God, that is funny. So that's kind of going to wrap it up here for the, uh, for the mail. Uh, at least I got a Kent sticker and I'm looking forward to trying some of these oat drips. I guess before we retro... I guess before we retro vape, do da do da. I guess we'll do some super chats, do da boop bop. No time, no time for the bumper, no time. Uh, Kevin Yum, that's right. Dick Roller, that's right. Kent, that's right. Hamish, there's a vlog emoji, Hamish. Appreciate you. In fact, uh, another huge shout out to Hamish for hooking me and Colin Mendelson up. He, he made the introduction and said, do you want to have Colin Mendelson on your show? And I said, yeah, absolutely. They're like, he's on board too. I'll ask him. He's on board too. Here's his email. Connect you guys. And now we got to do a show and it wouldn't have happened without, uh, without Hamish. So I appreciate you being here, Hamish, very much. TT Vape, hat fan is on Amazon for $39. But I mean, look, hat fan, is it the Inakin hat fan? Because that's the <laughs> that's the only fan that... Well, see, these hat fans look better. These hat fans look better and lighter weight than Inakin's. Inakin has like this huge lipo, this huge thing on the front. Other hat fans just have a tiny little fan cut into the bill. There's a, there's a hat... There's a hat... There's a hat fan that's... A hard hat fan. <laughs> hard hat fan. 
Well, there you go. You can get your own hat, hat fan if you want to, TT Vape. Although I wouldn't recommend it, you know, unless you're live streaming and reading a bunch of rage news. I don't know. Maybe you need it. Uh, Dan Baker, Juice My Way, there you are. We spoke at the rally in D.C. I told you I would send you. Consider my word kept. Enjoy. Hashtag Juice My Way. Appreciate it, Dan. Very much appreciate it. There's two flavors in there that really caught my eye, like in a serious way, and I am looking forward to trying the others. I have I have a bunch of DIYs. I got DIYs from Moharno. I don't know if you're here, Mo, but I, I've got your DIYs still. I still have some other Addy Tooney uh, DIYs as well. Advocate for Liberty, you want to know if I'm a fan of Hat Fan? Uh, yeah, uh, a huge fan of Hat Fan. Eric, very gracious of you. Just send an emoji. Appreciate that, bro. Thank you for being here tonight, Eric. Thank you. So, look, I guess what we're going to do right now is... uh, Why am I talking like this? I guess what we're going to do right now... I want to do some retro vaping. Don't you want to do some retro vaping? We do have a very uh, random liquid tasting coming up, and we are going to do some Getting to Know Grim Green because there's some songs that I want to put on the Spotify playlist, you see? Let's do it. Let's go through a box. Let's retro vape. Ah. 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 I didn't make it back in time because I ran over the edge of my Dixon flannel with my chair that was on the back of my chair. And I hope I didn't ruin my dicks and flannel, but I just don't have the time to check right now. So we have a box. Like I said, what we've been doing in the vlogs lately and what I think we're going to continue to do for the retro vapings is we're going to we're going to go through some boxes. I have boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes. <laughs> and boxes of mods, devices, all sorts of nonsense. We can go through the we can go through the tackle boxes if you want to and look at all of the toppers that exist. I just need to have a little bit of a vape of a rise bar. Talk amongst yourselves for like 2 seconds. Oh yeah. Lychee ice. That's what I got going right now. Lychee ice. Man, it's so much better than smoking. So much better than smoking. So what I have in front of me is one of those boxes. This is a oh, medium flat rate box. I wish I would have weighed this beforehand. I'm going to weigh every other box beforehand. It's a heavy effing box. And what it says on top is solo mods. So do you remember... Years ago, when I not not even years ago, 2017, I think, was the last time we saw the solo cabinet. But I had a cabinet, an IKEA Billy cabinet in my office that had a Han Solo frozen in carbonite poster on the front of it. Solo mods. The top of that solo mods, the top of that Han Solo Billy cabinet acted in a very similar way as this IKEA cabinet. In that, the top of it, like the top row, oh, you can't see that. The top of it, let me move my microphone. The top, nope. <laughs> the top of it was mods, was mods that I like wanted to keep around and still use. Like I showed off in that 11 years of stuff video. That's the purpose of this Ikea cabinet. The middle of it is just stuff that I want to go back to. You know, I want to use every once in a while. Well, when I moved... The solo mods ended up in a box and never got redistributed. I just left them in the box. And this was all the stuff that I wanted to use and keep from like the very tail end of 2016 to like, I don't know, the very end of 2017. Solo cabinet. And this is all the stuff that was on there. And instantly when I opened it, when I took that picture, I recognized some of it. And a lot of this isn't going to be retro, but there is a few retro things in here. One thing that's not retro, 
I have a I have a own boy rage squonker still. Yeah. Dual 18650, Rage Squonker, black on white, because I thought that looked so super, super cool. Don't even think they're selling those anymore. Uh, my old Revenant, I think this is the Swedish Revenant. I think I traded, I traded a recoil RDA with Matthias for his Revenant mod. And I liked it because I got it from my buddy Matthias in Sweden and it was kind of like Swedish colors. It was that yellow and kind of bluish color. And I really, really liked it. There are some old uh, Inakin Proton Mini. Sure, I wanted to keep that around. I really liked this thing. This is from a few years ago and I really, really enjoyed using that Inakin Proton Mini. There's some, holy shit, yeah. There's a Leaky. I don't know where this juice came from. It's all mods. I don't know why there'd be juice in here. You still rock your rage every day, Ark? See, that's dope. You're using, Wired Talks using your rage right now. Damn, maybe I need to break out the rage again. I had two, does this have batteries in it? Oh, okay. Whew. I thought these had batteries in it. But I have two of those, uh, you know, Wake Mod Co., Bit, what were these? The little foots, the big foot kits. One of them had the, the cup design on it. And one of them was just straight up murdered out black. And I, I used this cup design more than the murdered out black one. But I remember really liking these as well. Dual 18650 regulated guys. There is a squid. This was the bad squid. What was bad about this squid? There was something bad about this squid. It didn't work or it was broken. Squid Industries sent over the Squid V3. Ugh. Squid V3 and there was something wrong with it. It didn't, it wouldn't register atomizers or something. Hang on. Uh, what can I put on here? This maybe? There was something wrong with the Squid V3 and I was really bummed. I got to use it like twice before it died, but it was a matte black. Squid V3. No, it's still firing. What? I don't ever remember using this. It was a murdered out, super murdered out matte black Squid V3 that was up in that cabinet. It still works for some reason. I had it in my head that it didn't work anymore or that it was broken. In fact, I remember specifically reaching out to Squid to tell them that this was broken. Huh, that's weird, that's a bummer. Okay, so that's my bad. So I got a matte black Squid V3. This, see, I'm already looking at this box thinking, what can come out of here that I wanna use again? Squid V3, yeah. Just gonna, matte black Squid V3. It's just gonna go back there. In fact, I might put, the fuck Jerry, uh, you know, cup design <laughs> Bigfoot kit back there as well. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, my old, old, old Titan. I got an old Titan that I put the Culture of Clouds sticker on. Yeah, just an old Titan. I used to really like Titans. I used to love these dual parallels. In fact, this would work as well with this. I think this would be better than that single tube. Shit, maybe I'll use this Titan. The problem is I have a Titan already back there in the Ikea cabinet. This is multi-retro vaping. I'm just gonna vape everything I have in here because it's all 18650 shit. Dual parallel. Titan's great. Damn, the Titan's great. I really like the Titan mod. I used them uh, excessively. I don't know in some other boxes my original, original Titan, but this was just a blue guy Titan that was in there. I also have in here, oh, the Ogvape V200X. This was a piece of shit. This was a terrible device. I couldn't stand it. They took my favorite device, the V200, and made it bad. System off, buy? No. 
Yeah, they took my favorite device and turned it into like a plastic, fantastic piece of plastic. If you're gonna go for an Aug vape device, go for the newer V V200 and not the V200X because the V200X was mostly terrible. Without batteries in it, I feel like I could just snap this in half. I felt so weak. Um, pug, yeah, there's a pug, Vaporgate pug. Anybody remember the Vaporgate pug? I thought this thing was super dope. I loved using that. Uh, let's save that for a second. There are some mechs in here. There's a bunch of mechs in here. In fact, does this have a battery in it? This is a retro vaping that somehow made it into the solo cabinet. Switch mods. I've done this on retro vapes before. Single 18650 came with its own RDA. This is from 2015. Yeah, damn, that had smooth airflow. And it's still wicked. It's still wicked, bro. This has been sitting wicked. That's I'm gear. That's probably where the juice came from. That's probably where the juice came from. Let's see if we can just vape it right now. I don't even know what liquid is on here, but I definitely used this for a retro vape when I was living in LA. Well, maybe San Diego. Hey, it's working. Yeah. Horrible burnt. Horrible burnt death. Oh, that was bad. Why did I why did I do that? Why did I even bother doing that? But Switch Mods is in here. This company, I have no idea where this came from. Can anybody ID this mech mod? It feels really flimsy. It was like wood. It was like a wood mech mod. Had wooden on it. Oh, grow up, twisted messes. It's not that bad. Take a chill pill. This mech, I have no idea where this came from. Wooden mech mod. And it's got like a little gecko on it. No idea. Feels uh, real like aluminum-y, cheap, flimsy. Holy shit, this squonker too. This squonker, uh, yeah, didn't tick a lot of boxes for me, but dang, did it look nice. That was a nice little squonker. It had these doors, like these futuristic sliding doors that you could twist and close off the squonk and then twist and open up the squonk. And it was like so cool and futuristic. Oh yeah, I vaped it. I vaped it. I'm sorry. There's a lag in the chat, but I definitely vaped it. It was bad. <laughs> it's called the gecko. You don't know if it's called the gecko chasing clouds. You don't know what you're talking about. Holy shit. Uh, a big rig mod with a rough neck. Yep, that's that five pound spring. Rest in peace, James. I got a rig mod still ready to go with the rough neck on top. Rough neck on top. What else is in here? Okay, there's some pods. IPV, there's the Inakin, these Inakins. Remember these Inakin guys? Yeah, I kept those. There's a Lost Vape Orion in here with like the abalone shells. That's pretty neat. There's the Freemax Twister, which I was really proud of the video I did for the Freemax Twister on moving day, but I don't know. Nobody wanted to watch it. I thought it was really good. This, okay. Oh, oh, shit. Look, there's some stuff in here, man. Uh, some orchids. Anybody remember the orchid? <laughs> yeah, I uh, I got some. I got some still in this box because apparently I really liked the orchid. Orion Q with a full tank of liquid. I took this to uh, NVE. Oh, it's still going to vape for me. <gasps> What's in there? That's bad. That is bad. Orion Q. I remember very vividly. What is in here? Water Malone? I don't remember. Could be just too high of a nicotine for me. I took this to uh, to NVE and I got the cool clear drip tip and a cool clear like matchy matchy button. I really liked these. I really like the Orion Q. I'm surprised I just pulled that out of a box that it's been sitting in for well over a year and just picked it up and just vaped it. 
What's the worst that's going to happen? It's going to taste bad. That's it. That's literally the worst thing that's going to happen. Oh, yeah. The drag pod. Anybody remember the little tiny drag pod? Vupu sure has come a long way from the tiny drag pod. Uh, there are some mechs in here. In fact, this mech, this is the nemesis. This is where my nemesis mech mod has been sitting this entire time. In the solo cabinet box. Nemesis. God, I wish I had a 22 millimeter atomizer to put on here. I remember the first time I got a Nemesis and opened it up, I immediately thought, this is way too nice for me. This is way too nice of a mech mod. God, that button still feels just freaking perfect. Beautiful, beautiful button. Oh, Nemesis, bro, Nemesis. There's another unicorn in here, the, the Nora, the Zona. Something from Unicorn. What is this? No, this isn't Unicorn. What is this? It says sample. The Zona mech mod? Don't even remember. Apparently, this is something that I really, really liked. Don't I have no recollection of ever using it. Now, there is a 25 millimeter. Uh, oh, I forgot how great these are. The knurling on the MMKs from Vape Workstat out of Indonesia, it's the best knurling on a mod. It's way better than that Arkless. Way better. It just feels so much nicer. But there's a 25 millimeter MMK in here that I loved. Robert, what do you want to buy? The Nemesis? I'm not parting with the Nemesis. Not a chance of that. So other things in here are questionable. Questionable. The Plex bar, the Plexar, what the crap? Oh, this is just one of those tube guys that had an 18650 and a button. I don't know why I kept that. The Nugget, the Nugget Pro from Artery. Is Artery still even a company anymore? But I had the Nugget Pro in here, I guess, because I liked it so much. Uh, Addy Tooney, you do have a 22 millimeter in the box I sent you before with the liquids in it. Oh, the Twisted Messes V1? Is that, uh, is that 22 millimeters? Hang on. Hang on, Addy Tooney. Hang the F on. Will this fit on here? Will the 22? I thought the Twisted Messes... Oh, shit. Yeah, that fits. Look at that. I got an Addy Tooney heat-treated single-coil... Twisted Messes V1 on the, the first, one of the first mech mods I ever owned, the Nemesis. Shit, should we try to vape this, Toonie? I've never used the Twisted Messes, original recipe Twisted Messes in single coil mode. Never. Dang, all right. Hey, that's cool. You know what? I'll use this to taste, taste Yig. Let's do a double random liquid tasting because we have the technology to do it now. This is the Unicorn device, Unicorn Ink mech mod. Don't remember what it's called. It just says Unicorn Ink across it. I don't know. It was just a stainless steel resin button mechanical mod. You know, some things are just uninspired. Now this, holy fucking shirt balls. This was like... My favorite mech of all time. My favorite mech of all time. I would recommend this mech to everybody that asked about mech mods. And I liked it. It was called the Kronos by VHO, Vapehead Origins. Put the Twisted Messes RDA on there. I loved that it was telescoping. It needs some love. It's some brass and it needs some love. I loved the switch. The switch was my favorite part of this. Is that in focus? I can't really tell because my monitor is so tiny. But you twisted this little little thing right here and your switch would pop out and then it would fire, you know? And then you'd press your button in about halfway and twist this back and it would lock. This is the best locking feature I have ever seen on a mech mod still to this day. William, I definitely remember the Metal Moose mech mod. Definitely remember the Metal Moose mech mod. 
Kronos from Vapehead Origins. I think I've taken this out for a retro vape. In fact, damn, do we vape the Nemesis or do we vape the Kronos? It's a tough decision. Proton, all right, let me start putting this stuff back in here because there's only a few more things. Uh, this, I don't even remember where it came from, but I used to vape the ever-loving crap out of it. It was just a parallel box and it had Grim Army on it. And on the inside was snakeskin leather, like snakeskin on the inside. And I just thought that was so baller. I remember very vividly in 2015, I took this mod with me and a Twisted Messes to Arizona. And I was vaping, oh my God, it was like a Lucky Charms flavor, something like that. I used to love Love this box mod. It's hard to appreciate on video, but it's got like a sort of like pearly finish to it. It's got like a pearly finish. And on the freaking inside, snakeskin. Snakeskin on the inside. And then lastly, but certainly not leastly, with a missing magnet. God damn it. An e-pipe. This is from... Uh, Freight train mods, they used to make these incredible pipes. This was an 18650 pipe. The button was on the side right here and it was just this clicky little tactile button right there. Clicky little tactile button, had a 510 connection right there. Ego connection, by the way, and then this wooden piece to cover up the ego connection. So you could theoretically, I could theoretically put a dripper on here and then put a pipe stem in here, right? I could put a pipe stem in here with a dripper and then run it that way. Damn it. Where are all my pipe stems? I don't even know anymore. I feel like I got rid of a bunch of them and that bums me out. Shit. 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 Damn it. I can't find any of my pipe stems. Freight train mods. I don't think they're around anymore. Uh, this one might make a comeback soon, though. I feel like that one could make a comeback really soon. You know who used that pipe more than me was my wife, Casey. She loved, loved a good pipe mod. Lastly... But certainly not leastly, and a very dead version of it. I'm going to have to see if I can bring this back to life. I might need to send this out to somebody like Michelle Lynn. You down to fix a 44? I got a, uh, a Joe Lit 44. This was the jam back in the day, man. These 44 boxes with the lipos and the 3D printed sleds and the big tactile MyTech switches. This was a DNA 100, 150 something like that Hammond box yeah N yeah he corrected though for the Hammond lean he corrected for the Hammond lean Jake Scrapwood that's very this is a Hammond box new vapors wouldn't understand the Hammond lean so these boxes these Hammond boxes were really really popular with modders everyone would just throw a sled in here you know throw a dual 18650 sled in here and call it good like with a MOSFET and you could make it parallel or series or regulated and it was DNA 150 Kent. All right. I still have my 44, um, but the LiPo inside of it is dead. Anyway, the top of these are not flat. These Hammond boxes, like the original hexomes were all made in Hammond boxes as well. They're not flat. And so when you put a flat 510 on here, your RDA would just have a little bit of like a boop, just a little lean to it. We called it the Hammond lean. But now what Joe Litt did is he offset his. So it's down a little bit on one side. So when you put an RDA on here, it just sits flat. It just sits perfectly straight up and down. The 44 was immune, immune to the Hammond lean immune to it. So here, let me start packing this up. There's one more in here that I wanted to show you guys. I think this came from BJ box mods, BJ's box mods. It was a Hammond box. 
that I covered in stickers. I got this at a vape showcase in Las Vegas, I believe. And it was, this is essentially a miniature hexome. Two 18650s, same potentiometer on the side. I put a big dude logo down one side and I put a Jess Marie DHD sticker on the other side. 510 on top, flat 510 by the way. Big, huge, clicky MyTech switch right there. And yeah, it was dual 18650s. Duels. And I loved it. I loved the crap out of this. As soon as I saw this, I thought, why are hexomes so big? Hexomes don't need to be that big because you can fit two 18650s in a much, much smaller box. This one might stay out. I'm feeling sentimental. I'm feeling sentimental. So that might stay out. So let's put the rest of these away. Let's get onto some taste and some liquids. So that's just, you know, that's one small box of a bunch of different crap that's in there. Like I said, this used to be in the solo cabinet. Titan, Revenant, sure. Put all this back in here. Put you back in here. Careful, you know. I used to be uh, hyper careful with all of my mods. In fact, you'll see when we get into other boxes and I show you how I was storing my mods. When I was storing my mods, I would put like a layer of paper, like, you know, wrapping paper or something, and then a layer of mods, and then a layer of bubble wrap, and then a layer of mods, and then a layer of bubble wrap, and I would have all the mods like spaced out perfectly before I'd box them up. Like, I was really careful and really babying these mods until maybe like 2017 when it started turning into that when it was like fucking <laughs> throw all this just in a box don't care no bubble wrap no paper no nothing just <sighs> just throw these all in a box that's what started happening it's okay they're they're durable you know they're uh they're resilient so i think we're gonna do a double header liquid tasting here double header liquid tasting I'm gonna get the Portuguese, Portuguese tart to vape on the twisted messes. And then we're gonna do oat drips. But I wanna do both of these liquids and I hope you guys are okay with that. Let me get an 18650 for my Nemnesis. Tight, tight fit and finish there. <gasps> oh, that's right. You had to unscrew the button way out. Holy shit. That's too far out, isn't it? Am I missing a piece of my nemesis? I might not be able to do this with a nemesis, bro. Now, is it the 510 pins? I bet it's the 510 pins. Yeah, it's the 510 pins. No, it's not the 510 pins. Damn it, man. We might not be able to do this with a nemesis. Because the Nemesis has a 510 pin. It wasn't hybrid. It was not hybrid. Oh, shoot. All right, if this doesn't work with the Nemesis, this is just going to be f hovering in space. This is The, the Nemesis was not made to, to hold the Twisted Messes RDA. Damn it. That is, this is so upsetting to me that I might not be able to use this nemesis right now. Hang on. Full Russian hacker. I wonder if I'm missing a piece. I could be missing a piece of the nemesis. Because that controlled the switch. That was just the lock. Okay. Yeah, and the switch went up and down. It was telescoping switch. Damn it. Okay, we might not be able to use this. That's okay. Let's do a couple super chats. I, I'm not sure. I didn't see what came in, but let's do a couple super chats before we get to the very random liquid. Ugh. Okay, that's it. That's all you get. I don't know why that took so long. <laughs> Uh, where did we leave off? Vapor Owl. Holy shit, it's Vapor Owl. Still use your pipe mods? Vapor Owl, I haven't talked to you in nine years. 
I mean, it's been fucking forever, bro. Uh, do you still use your pipe mods? You had a nice collection at one time. I still pull out my e-pipe mods by Matt. Yep. Anyway, stay well. Cronus rocked. Fuck yes, the Cronus rocked. In fact, if we can't use the Nemesis, which it's looking like we can't use the Nemesis, I might throw this Twisted Messes RDA on that crazy Kronos device. Vapor out. I hope you're doing good, man. I hope you're hanging in there. You know, I still have my pipe mods. I just don't, I haven't used my pipe mods in quite a long time. Quite a long time. Good Lord. How long has it been since I've talked to you, Vapor Owl? 2013? Maybe that was the last time we talked? Maybe. Jake Scrapwood, uh, a Hammond box. Yep, that's Vapors won't understand that Hammond lean. It's a thing. It's the Hammond lean. What we're going to do right now is, oh, I didn't run the bumper. Did I run the... Oh, I did run the retro vape bumper. Okay, good. <sighs> yeah, shit. What we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to do a very random liquid tasting. But here's the thing. I have to take a bio break. I've just consumed too much water and beer. And now I'm doing the pee pee dance. And I need to go take a pee pee. So I'm going to run the liquid bumper. And then I'll go pee as fast as I can. I'll move my microphone out of the way. So if anybody wants to take a screenshot to use it as your Zoom background, you're more than welcome to. How long was it really? 20 seconds? It was like 15 seconds? I ran. I sprinted. Damn it, Nemesis. Maybe the Nemesis... I don't... Why? Why? The Nemesis should work. The Nemesis... It's upsetting me that the Nemesis isn't working. Damn it, man. That's okay. You know what? That's fine. Let's move on. It's going to be the Kronos. It's going to be the Kronos. So we are here to very randomly taste some liquid. I got a DIY e-liquid from Addy Tooney and I got oat drips. Oat drips. I got my oat drips here from, uh, from Kent, Twisted Messes. I'm excited to try both of these liquids. Oh yeah, it was telescoping. God, it was so perfect. What a great mech. I would, I if I ever make a mech, I'm just gonna steal this design. This switch is amazing. <laughs> this locking feature on it is amazing. I have a round wire, or not a round wire, fused Clapton here from Addy Tooney, tasting Addy Tooney liquid on an Addy Tooney atomizer, on an Addy Tooney build. I've, I've even, I've never run the Twisted Messes RDA in single coil mode before. It's crazy, it's bananas. This shit is bananas, B. Hmm. Hmm. Liquidy. All right, let's see. Fire. Oh, it's locked. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh, yeah, buddy. It's happening. Let's put some more liquid on here. Yep. That's what I like to see. Just vapors happening all over the place. Give me vapors. All right. So that one's good to go. Now let's turn our attention to the oat drips. Going to be tasting the oat drips tonight out of that Arclis with the uh, recoil, titanium recoil on top. This liquid Kent already looks dark. Dark e-liquid. Dark. 
There is so much sweetener in that. That is a, an obscene amount of sweetener in that. It kind of tastes like cinnamon toast crunch a little bit, bro. I'm really excited for this oat drips. I'm like overly excited for this oat drips. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this oat drips. How many more times can I possibly say oat drips? Because what I'm doing is I'm saturating these coils with some oat drips. I might need a new 21700 in here too. Get it nice and wet. All right. So that's nice and wet. That's what she said. So look, what do we try first? Let's try the oat drips first. I'm just going to take one pull, one toot, as I used to say. All right. Let me have one toot of the port. Oh, I hope I used the right liquid. Okay. Whew. Portuguese yig a toot. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I always do, Addy Tooney. I'm going to sit back with these just for a second. I know we're running out of time. I'm going to sit back with these just for a second. I'm going to vape them. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off my mic. You won't be able to hear anything. And by the way, I edit all this out for the podcast. I'm going to cut off my mic. You won't hear anything right now except the sound of your own finger clicking that like button. That's what you're going to hear right now. So I'm going to cut off my mic. You won't hear anything. glad that I love water so much. It makes it easy to stay hydrated. Hydro homies. Oh. Stay hydrated, hydro homies. Um, so here's where we're landing. Let's do the Portuguese Yig first. It's it's really good, Addy Tooney. It's really good. It's a very Yig-ish. You come, you come just about as Yig-ish as Sifu got with his Yig. This has a little bit more of like that custard like crusty custard type of flavor to it crusty custard the sifu one was a little heavy on the black currant you have mellowed that black currant out but it's also introduced like a little bit of like a i love it 
it's really good. I mean, really very good, Toonie. Really rocking. Almost. Almost Yig. We call it near Yig. Really close, man. Really damn close. We should definitely put this out there. I don't know. We could definitely call it Portuguese Yig, but it's not quite there. It's not quite that Yig flavor. But it is delicious. It is tasty and delicious. Even with a single coil. Damn. That is that is as near Yig as I have tasted so far. Now this oat drips, Kent, I know you're still here. This oat drips, it's six milligrams, so it's a little bit throaty, right? I'm getting a little bit of throatiness from it just because of the six milligram. But it is freaking delicious. Freaking delicious. It tastes to me, hang on, let me have one more pull here. It tastes to me like the Cracklin Oat brand cereal. Does anybody need Cracklin Oat? Does anybody remember that Cracklin Oat brand cereal? That's almost exactly, exactly what oat drips taste like. Yeah, Yig adjacent. Yig, <laughs> Yig adjacent. It's a Yig alike. It's a, it's a near Yig. It's an almost Yig. Cracklin Oat brand, you guys. Cracklin Oat Bran. It tastes like grape nuts with milk and sugar. No, you're wrong. It tastes like... Cra <laughs> I'm sorry, Kent. It tastes like Cracklin Oat Bran, the cereal. It does kind of taste like grape nuts with milk and sugar. It tastes like Cracklin Oat Bran to me. I can't get over it. I can't get Cracklin Oat Bran image out of my head, which makes sense. Oat... Does Grape Nuts have oats? Is that an oat, oat, oat-based cereal? Because I know Cracklin Oat brand is an oat-based cereal because they have oat in the name. Cracklin Oat brand. It's delicious. It's milky. It's sweet. It's oaty. And best of all, I feel like there's no fucking way that you could say that that's a youth or teenager appealing label. Oat drips. It sounds like, you know, Wheaties without the milk. It just sounds terrible. Thankfully, it's actually really nice and beautifully sweet. Damn. Damn oat drips. Well, I can't wait to let Casey Pickle taste that liquid. I think she's really going to like it. As for me, I'm going to hang out here with this Portuguese yig. I'm going to hang out here with this Portuguese yig. We should uh, post that recipe. Post this recipe somewhere in like the, the Grim Army Facebook group or something. Because it's pretty rad. If you've never had yig before, this is like a good prelude to yig. Prelude to yig. Damn, that's good, Eddie Tooney. Well done. I like that. I might even kept, keep this wonky ass setup going with the red heat treated twisted messes RDA on top of a tarnished brass Cronus with a single 18650 from like 2012. Because it's still vaping awesomeness. So there you go. That's going to wrap up the very random liquid tasting. In fact, I can't think of two more random liquids than tasting two liquids that I got in the mail. In fact, if I had a third RDA freshly wicked and ready to go, I would get into that like that lemon flavor that you had over there or that banana moon pie that you had over there. It's okay. We'll get there. All in good time. All in good time. I don't think, were there any more super chats that happened? Were there a couple more super chats that happened there? Yeah, we had a, we had a couple more super chats. Let's do a couple more super chats before we get to know me. Nope, that's all you get. Uh, we have oh we got one more from Vapor Owl. Last saw you NVE 2019 here in New York. What? Okay, before that it had been a really long time. Vapor Owl. They made us wait at the gate for passes. Oh, that's right. And they were pissed. That's when I saw you last. Okay, so it was NVE 2019. But before that it was like fucking vape bash. 2013, right? 
that was the last time. Maybe that that ECC in 2014, maybe then. It had been a while, Vapor Owl. In fact, Vapor Owl, didn't you send me that pipe uh, container that had like the jar on the back of it? I'm pretty sure that came from you. I don't know if I still have that, but I'm pretty sure that came from you. Gabe, very gracious of you. Shout out from the North Pole. Fucking happy birthday. Is it really your birthday, Gabe Claus? Gabe Claus, if it's not your birthday, I'm not singing happy birthday because I don't want to sing happy birthday when it's not someone's birthday because you lose a little bit of your life force. Nobody knows that, but if you sing happy birthday and it's not someone's birthday, you age a little bit quicker. So if it's your birthday, Gabe Claus, I'll sing to you. SVK, as always, thanks for all you do. Fist bumps to all in the chat. I love the boxes. Brings back memories. So many memories, SVK. And that, dude, we have... One, two, three, four, five, five more boxes to go through, some of which might take us two vlogs to get through. Five more boxes to go through, and then the tackle box. The freaking tackle box. That's when we're going to get into some real, real old school stuff. Real, real old school stuff. Got one here from uh, Juice My Way. Where will the Juice My Way sticker spend its days? Oh, I don't know. I have lots of sticker options here in the office. I've been putting stickers in random places. So it could end up somewhere. You, you, hey, juice my way. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Michelle Lynn, uh, don't forget to flush. Just saying, put the seat down. You, you're you not the boss of me, Michelle Lynn. Dull Dime Mods 2019. Just kidding. I did all of those things, Michelle Lynn. Uh, let's go ahead and start wrapping up this vlog here. Let's get to uh, Let's get to know Grim Green a little bit. Can I say that publicly, Michelle? Can I say that publicly? I guess I won't. I guess I won't. Do I look choppy to anybody else? Why is it so choppy? Do I need to refresh? Is it choppy for anybody? Is anybody else getting choppy ass video? Okay. Well, maybe it's just me. Am I choppy? Am I too choppy? Am I choptastic? I don't like that. I don't like what's happening right now. Anyway, we're gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna do some getting to know Grim Green right now. I just refreshed. It's okay. It, it was. It's okay now. Okay. That's weird. That it, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like choppy. Can I chest a crap cam at garbage cam? No, I don't even have that hooked up. I don't know why it's choppy right now. We're gonna do a getting to know Grim Green. We're gonna add two songs to the getting to know Grim Green. I've got a running Spotify playlist that is ju only bangers. Only bangers. These are some of my favorite songs of all time as I go through my, albeit small but important, record collection. In fact, I haven't gone record shopping in since the pandemic. Haven't gone record shopping at all because, shit, record stores are closed, right? So the album that we're going to be talking about today, this came out in 1992. So I was... Becoming a freshman. Yeah. I was becoming a freshman in high school when this record came out. I was, you know, hanging out with my buddy Jim and kind of just searching for like the music that I really liked. Like at that time, you know, I was kind of into Metallica, a little bit of Motorhead. I was really into DRI for some reason around that time, but I didn't have like musical genres or like favorite bands or anything that I really, really was into my freshman year. A lot of metal, you know, a lot of Metallica, stuff like that. And then uh, when grunge hit, shortly after that, it was everything I had ever wanted in music. I was, gr I just lived grunge to the bone. Just lived grunge. So this is like, this could be considered like pre-grunge. It kind of came out right when the grunge kind of hit was happening. I'm talking about Helmet. Is anybody hip to uh, anybody hip to Helmet? Anybody out there ever listened to any Helmet? Now, this was an East Coast, what a lot of people would consider to be a crust core band in that they just like to drop D everything and they just barred everything. You know, it was just drop D and all of their power chords were not power chords. It was just bars and it, it was great. I loved it. I would, I would, 
I want to start a band that is in this like East Coast, early 90s crust core genre. If you're not hip to helmet, oh, you're going to get hip to some helmet. I bought this CD when I had, you know, when CDs were a thing and I was buying CDs. I went to the Target at the north end of Reno with my buddy Jim in 1992 and I saw helmet. I saw this CD sitting there on the shelf and it clicked in my head and I went, oh, Helmet, wait, I think I like that band. And I, t- I remember turning to my buddy Jim and I was like, Helmet, I, I like that Helmet song, right? Why, why can't I think of it? What's the Helmet song that I like? And he just did the air guitar for it. He's like, yeah, you know, it's that one that goes, uh, Jananet, 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 And I was like, oh yeah, yeah. I like that song. I'm, I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy this CD. And I bought the Helmet CD. And it was the first CD that I ever bought where the back of the CD was like clear, like all of the plastic on the CD was clear and it had art underneath the disc. And I thought, whoa, that's so cool, bro. That's like the coolest thing ever of all time. So I loved me some Helmet. L- loved me some Helmet. In fact, there is a... Uh, we, I spent a lot of my, I, this is something I talk about too. I spent a lot of my time in my life, about a decade, being a very, very devout Bible thumping uh, Christian. And there is, at least once upon a time, before Christian music got really good, there was like Christian versions of of non-Christian bands. At least that's what like the youth counselors at, at you know, at church camp would tell you. Oh, you shouldn't listen to Metallica, but if you like Metallica, you should listen to The Crucified. Or oh, if you don't, you know, if you don't want to listen to Megadeth, you can listen to Deliverance. And there was like these equivalencies. Well, there was an East Coast crustcore band named Everdown. Everdown. They released two spectacular albums. If I could get that's the problem about collecting shit on vinyl is I can't get any of this old Christian music that I listen to. Like I want Everdown on vinyl. I want Stavesacre on vinyl. I want MXPX on vinyl. I want Slick Shoes on vinyl. Like I want all of these, I want Embodiment on vinyl. I want all the Living Sacrifice albums on in vinyl. But there was an ever there was this band called Everdown and I loved them just as much as I loved Helmet and I would listen to these records like back to back, Helmet, Everdown, Helmet, Everdown. So huge helmet fan the two songs that we're putting on the getting to know grim green spotify playlist you think it's going to be in the meantime done don't you it's not going to be in the meantime in fact this is really the only helmet album that i truly truly love like they released betty after this and i didn't love it like i loved in the meantime this is just in my opinion like the quintessential helmet album, like Betty's great. And the other stuff they went on to do, it's great. It's just not in the meantime. And this, in fact, this vinyl, I promise we're going to get to what we're going to put on that in a second. Ha, look that. That is some fucking cool vinyl record right there. Red and blue, red and blue all over the place. So the two songs that we're going to put, hang on. What am I new here? Two songs we're going to put on the Getting to Know, Grim Green, Spotify playlist, Unsung. That's the song. That's the hit. Unsung. Yeah, Betty. I think it was called Betty. Wasn't it called Betty? Am I wrong here? Is that not called? Uh, yeah, it was called Betty. Yeah, Betty. 1994, they, they, they did Betty. This was 1992, Helmet Meantime. The two songs that we're putting on the Getting to Know, Grim Green, Spotify playlist unsung that's their big hit unsung uh great big radio song loved it love everything about it uh really super catchy really super groovy and that's what i really like and then we're gonna put fbla2 and i know on the previous album they had a song called fbla1 and then on this album they have a song called fbla2 and I don't know what any of it means. I don't know the connection between them. I don't even know what FBLA stands for. Future Bank Loaners of America. I don't know. I don't know what FBLA stands for, but FBLA 2 is <laughs> banger, certified. 
Certified banger. Certified oat drips banger. So there you go. I love Helmet. I still love Helmet. I bought it in Reno, Nevada in 1992 at a Target. <laughs> and I had to ask my buddy Jim if I even liked this band. And he sang it for me. So there you go. There's a little bit of Helmet. Let me finish this off. We're just running long. We're running about 10 minutes long. That's fine. I feel like we always, always run long. But uh, one last super chat before we wrap this up from Eric. Very gracious of you. I appreciate that. 100%. Hundy P. One Hundy P. Yeah, Liam. Unsung is now playing in the shop. Fuck yeah, Unsung. Fuck yeah, Helmet. Fuck yeah, in the meantime. Fuck yeah, FBLA too. Those will be all on the Spotify playlist. I'll have a link in the description. If you wish to check out the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist, I'm telling you, it's all bangers. It's just packed top to bottom with all my favorite songs, just pure bangers. So before we wrap this vlog up, let me take a quick look around the room and make sure I didn't forget anything. What? The recipes ended up on the ground. The recipes ended up on, that's not okay. Okay, good. Got my dude wick. Whew. I was, this is what, this is what I was really looking for. I can't believe I almost misplaced my dude wick. But uh, there you go, guys. We're here. We're at the end of the vlog. I think I say this every week, but you, you people that watch the vlog and make it to the very end, you're literally just my favorite people on earth. If I ever get the chance to meet you in real life, I do dispense hugs or crisp crisp high fives. Maybe if we have masks on, we can do a little bit of an elbow bump. That's what we were doing at the rally, sort of elbow bumps there. But uh, thank you guys, seriously, so much for being here. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you so much for uh, supporting the vlog because I love the vlog and I look forward to the vlog, maybe even a little bit more than you guys do, maybe, I think. So thank you so much for being here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and end this. Remember that no matter... What anybody tells you, vaping is at least 95% less harmful than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, no matter what's in your hand, if it's a rise bar or if it's a mech with oat drips in it, absolutely, you guys. Let's keep on vaping. Be excellent to each other. Peace.